Hey, it's Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your host of the I Heart My Life show. This is episode 94. Do you have what it takes to have a successful online coaching business? So today I'm sharing five ways in which you can know for sure if you have what it takes to run a successful online coaching business. I'm sharing some of the top tips and some of the things that I've learned along my own journey. The past six years has taught me a lot about what it takes to truly become a masterful coach, put yourself out into the world, impact people, run a company, and much, much more. So let's dive in. This episode is sponsored by iHeart Coaching, our signature program for new and aspiring online coaches. iHeart Coaching is your one-stop shop designed to support you in becoming the next standout online coach. Whether you're brand new to the digital space or looking to take your coaching business to the next level, this is a comprehensive program that's going to show you how to build a successful coaching business from A to Z. We're going to share how to generate maximum revenue and book out your calendar with dream clients. To learn more, go to iheartcoaching.com. When I was growing up, my mom had a habit of telling me that I should be a teacher. So when I was little, I was the oldest of four kids, and we used to go down in the basement during the cold Ohio winters, and I would set up little desks and play student and teacher with my siblings. Now, I was always the teacher. I was the one guiding them. I was the one making them do their homework, (laughs) and this made my mom think, hmm, maybe she wants to follow in my footsteps because my mom was a teacher. Maybe she wants to follow in my footsteps and also be a teacher. But I quickly learned growing up that a teacher would not be at all what I wanted to do with my life. I realized that teachers barely made any money. I think that my mom back in the 80s when she was a teacher at a Catholic school, she made about $7,000 a year. And I remember her telling me that and thinking that is not for me. There is no way I'm going to be a teacher. Very early on, I had big financial goals and I also thought about running my own company. But for a long time, I had no idea what that looked like, and I ended up going down the path of getting a psychology degree. I was always fascinated by why people did what they did. What could we look at internally or mentally that would help us really understand what made people tick? And I was also obsessed with creating a life of happiness. Um, I loved fairy tales. I loved true love stories. I loved when I watched movies and everything ended with that happy ending. And I wanted that for the rest of the world. I wanted that for myself. Now, it wasn't until years later, years after I graduated and ended up turning down my master's in uh, counseling psychology, that I discovered the world of coaching. I had grown up knowing about coaches because my dad always had business coaches. He was an entrepreneur himself and his parent, his dad was also an entrepreneur and my other grandpa was an entrepreneur. And so I knew about this world of coaching. But when I thought about coaches, I thought about men probably wearing suits, carrying little three ring binders, coming around to my dad's house, teaching him how to move forward with his business, how to become a better leader. Leadership was something that was always talked about around our house, but it was never the type of coaching that attracted me. It was something that I thought was for men who were trying to help other men be more successful. But when I discovered the world of online coaching, in particular, I learned about this amazing woman named Marie Forleo, everything started to shift for me. I saw myself in Marie, and I saw that everything I had done up until that point, which was April 2013 had led me to this moment and had led me to be the coach that I now was hoping I could be. I had done the psychology degree. I actually had also done a master's in nonfiction writing. I could use that to reach other people. I had practiced being a teacher for many years, although it was in the basement of my parents' house. (laughs) That had to count for something. And ultimately, I had a desire to help people because during the period of 2008 to 2013, I had gone through something incredibly traumatic. It wasn't like I had lost a family member or I hadn't experienced any sort of abuse, but I had been through a quarter life crisis, which really shaped my whole reason for wanting to become a coach. You see, I didn't know what I was meant to do, and yet I had this feeling like I was meant to do something big. 
And for those five years, I was lost. I was confused. I was depressed. I was suffering from anxiety. I didn't know how to get out of my extreme funk that I had found myself in. I felt like a failure. I felt guilty for having wasted my parents' money on my education. I felt like I should know more than I currently do, and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand how I had gotten to this place. And when I finally discovered coaching and made it out on the other side, I realized, you know what, it's my duty to help other people who feel the same. People who know they're meant for something big, but for whatever reason, can't pinpoint what their purpose actually is. And that was me for so many years. And so I felt like I had that firsthand experience that I could use to help my clients move through something similar. So first and foremost, when you're thinking about coaching, you have to ask yourself, do you actually have a desire to help people? I truly believe that's the most important foundation. Now, obviously, there's a variety of different ways in which you can do that, but you have to ask at your core, is there something calling you? Do you desire to help people? Now, I'll be perfectly honest in that I love the idea of serving the masses. I love sharing this podcast with as many people as possible. I love speaking on stages. I love being interviewed. I love putting posts out into the world on social media. I love doing Facebook Lives. I love getting my message out to as many people as possible. And as my company has grown, I have decided to work less intimately with people, say, one-on-one. Um, because frankly, there are a lot of incredible coaches out there and we have coaches under me within our company who are able to serve our clients in that way. And since there's a lot of demand on my time and there's a lot of different things that I'm involved in, it's just not as possible for me to work with as many people intimately. So I want you to think about that in terms of, I'm bringing this up, I should say, because I want you to think about the way in which you help people Um, and know that even if you have a desire to help people right now, it might not look the same five years from now or 10 years from now, but you have to have some sort of desire to transform lives or to increase the satisfaction of lives of those who follow you. And that could look like you work with people one-on-one, which I did a lot back in the day. At one point I had 27 one-on-one clients and I was running two group programs and I led the entire program, you know, and so it could look like that, or it could look like what my role is, is like today, which is, I'm the face of the company, but I'm not doing all of the coaching. There's other ways in which I'm serving people. And so I just wanted to make that kind of differentiation because I think so often people think, well, I'm an introvert. How can I help people every single day, all day, and then not feel depleted? You know, what do I have to do to make sure I'm still giving to myself and also giving to my clients? But there's a variety of different ways as a coach that you actually help people. And it doesn't always look like hopping on a call, hopping on a Zoom chat. You know, there are a variety of different ways that you put yourself out there and that you teach and that you share your expertise. So the first way in which you know that you have what it takes to run a successful online coaching business really is that fact. Do you actually want to help people? Do you want to make the world a a better place? Do you want to create some sort of movement? Do you want to leave your stamp on the world and have people remember all of the incredible, charitable, amazing things that you did to improve the quality of life for your clients and anyone who is in your tribe? right? Is that a desire of yours? And of course, there are other careers that allow you to help people. At one point, my mom told me I should be a nurse, but I definitely didn't want to do that. I did actually explore becoming a doctor at one point, but I didn't care about chemistry or physics or all of that. Um, it, frankly, it, it made me want to cry. And I did cry after I was trying to take my uh, chemistry final and I ended up leaving <laughs> in tears. So you have to identify what sort of ways in which you want to help people. And if coaching appeals to you and you do have a desire to leave the world a better place and to transform lives, great. Let's move on to uh, number two. So the next point I want to make is that if you have a desire to help people, you have to get clear around what your expertise actually is. And so for me, like I said, I had gone through a quarter life crisis. I had experienced all those moments where I didn't have a purpose. And yet I felt like I was meant for something big. There was that disconnect there. And I had worked with a happiness coach 
She truly was called a happiness coach. She worked at this place in London called the Happiness Center. And she was the first person to really inform me that I had the power over my thoughts. I had power over my thoughts. I could control my thoughts. And she was the one who suggested that I focus on what I wanted instead of what I didn't want or instead of what was going wrong in my life. And that really opened up my eyes to a whole new way of thinking, a way of thinking that even, you know, getting that psychology degree for whatever reason, I didn't learn it during those four years. And it's crazy to me to think about that, that it took me going through a quarter life crisis, moving to London, you know, being age 24 to learn that I had the power over my thoughts. But once I learned that and I got exposed to things like the book, The Secret, and I started doing my vision board and I took Oprah's advice and I practiced uh, gratitude every single day, things started to really shift in my life. And it was one of those light bulb moments where it was like, I have to teach everyone else this. Like, I cannot believe that we are not learning all of this in school. It's my duty to now take this expertise and share it with other people. And so maybe you've been through some sort of experience and you realize that there's something you wish you would have known or you wish you had had the coach that you now are to help and guide you through whatever it was that you were experiencing. I know a lot of people have experienced things like divorce or abuse or eating disorders, and now they have the knowledge to really understand why in the world that happened in the first place, how you move through it, how you um, move to the other side and actually use it for good. And so they're using their life experience to help others. Some people actually have degrees. Some people have done the training. Maybe you have both. Regardless, I want you to think about what your expertise actually is and what it is that you want to share with the world. And by the way, Even though you have an expertise in it, that doesn't mean that you build a business around it. So for example, one of my clients, she was sharing with me that when she started off as a coach, she shared with one of her other coaches that she had been through um, bulimia and anorexia and she had made it onto the other side and and really transformed that way um, of doing life and that eating disorder. And so her coach was like, oh, that's such an amazing story. You should help other people as a health coach. And she said she knew in that moment that it wasn't the right fit for her her, but she didn't know what else she wanted to do. So she decided to move forward and give it a try. But she quickly realized that was not her mastery. Although she had experienced that and she did have a level of expertise in it, that wasn't what she actually was lit up by. So I want you to think about your expertise that actually excites you. What's that thing that you could talk about every single day, all day until you were blue in the face? There have been so many times where I've had the flu or I've just been under the weather and I have to do a webinar or get on this podcast or hope a, host a group call. And I always tell my team, like, this is stuff I can talk about in my sleep and I absolutely love it. And so although I might not be feeling my best, I can get up and I can deliver and I can support people. So what's that expertise that's not only something that you have knowledge on, but you're super passionate about? And if you don't know what that is, I often tell people to think about You know, if someone reached out to you, even if it was us, right, if we reached out to you and we said, we want to put you on our stage tomorrow at I Hurt My Life Live, we have uh, a spot that just opened up. Think about what you would speak on. What would you get on stage and talk about? What is your keynote focused on? What do you want to leave the audience with? How do you want them to feel? And that should help you identify that thing that's your thing, the thing that lights you up, that is your expertise. All right, number three. In order to have a successful online coaching business, you have to be willing to do your own deep mindset work. Now, this one often surprises people, but it confuses me why it surprises people. (laughs) Because as a coach, you have to be able to support people in shifting their mindset. Even if you're a strategist, even if you're a consultant, there are times where people will have things that come up for them, insecurities, things they need to move past, fears, doubts, things from the past that are harming them in the present. And you have to be able to help them move through that. And you also have to be self-aware enough to know when somebody is projecting their own material on you or when it's actually about you and it's something that you need to change. So let me break this down a little bit more. As I mentioned to you, when I lived in London, I went to the Happiness Center and worked with a coach, and she really helped me start to transform my thinking. But that was really just the start of my own coaching experience. So before 
Um, starting I Heart My Life, I had invested in B-School with Marie Forleo. There wasn't a big mindset component to that program, though. So I knew that I needed even more support when I quickly realized I wasn't making the money in my business. <laughs> and I wanted to change that. I wanted to understand how I actually start thinking like an entrepreneur. And so I found another program that helped me with both. It helped me with business strategy as well as mindset. And I literally became a different person. I started to truly transform my mindset. Um, In particular, one of the focuses was on money mindset. So I got clear on what beliefs were holding me back. One of the things that I learned very early on was that I was not good at sales. And that was because I was being too timid. And I was worried about hurting people's feelings. I was worried about being that used car salesperson. I was worried about going deeper on those sales calls and asking people, well, what is actually coming up for you? What are those fears? You just told me that you want to work together and now you're saying it's not the right time or you don't have the money. So what is going on there? Because there's a disconnect. Instead, during my period of 54 no's in a row, I literally would get on call after call and people would say, oh, I love this program, but I don't have the money or it's not the right time or it's my child's birthday party next week, which I literally heard that excuse as well. And I'd be like, okay, no problem, bye. And that would be the end of the call. (laughs) And so I realized that I had a lot of work to do around my own money story. I also had a lot of shame around the debt that I had in my business. I was $30,000 in credit card debt and $90,000 in student loan debt. And I had to release that. And I had to not uh, no longer make myself wrong for that. So those are just a few examples of the ways in which I worked on my mindset because I knew that unless I figured all of that out, number one, I wasn't going to be able to get on sales calls. Number two, no one was going to buy for me. My company wasn't going to make any money. I'd be uh, continuously focused on my debt instead of creating abundance. So all of those things were what I learned as I worked with another coach specifically on my mindset. And so you have to be willing to do your own deep mindset work, not just so that you can support your clients, but so your business actually moves forward. Because right now, there's a lot of stuff that's probably holding you back if you haven't yet done this work. For example, I see a lot of people have a fear of success, and they don't even know it's there. And yet they're self-sabotaging every single day. They're stopping themselves from moving forward with their dreams because innately they feel like they can't handle success or they're worried that as their team gets bigger, they're going to be overwhelmed or they have an innate belief that they're bad with money. And so they stop themselves from making more money. So that's why it's so important as a business owner, regardless of whether you're a coach or not, but as a business owner, you need to actually generate the beliefs that are going to get you to your goals. And that means you need to start to think like a successful entrepreneur. And we all, none of us, frankly, are programmed to think in that way unless our parents deliberately taught us to think in this way, because our mindset is set when we're a child based on what we learn from our family and society. And so unless your parents had an awareness, or maybe they were business owners, you know, even my dad, he was a business owner, but there's still beliefs that I grew up with that um, don't serve me in my company, and I've had to work on them. So we all have that. And so it's our duty to do the work on ourselves before we serve others. The next point is number four. You have to be willing to learn about marketing and strategy and sales. So I've already covered a little bit around sales and what's required of us as coaches to be able to move our companies forward. And I think this is where there's often a disconnect for coaches. There's so much in the category of the desire to help people that they forget that they're running a business. So I always say you're running a business, not a charity. (laughs) And a lot of people, for a lot of people, that's a wake up call of like, okay, well, you're right. I need to be making money somehow, but I have all these fears around sales and how can I make money if I'm helping people? And there's a lot of old mentality around service that's wrapped up for people in the coaching space. Oftentimes people want to discount their prices. They don't want to raise their rates because they want to be able to retain clients. And so there's a belief that there's a scarcity of clients in the world. So again, this is where your mindset comes into play. There's also a lot of um, stuff that comes up for people around marketing. They feel sleazy putting themselves out there. Again, there's that belief of if I want to serve and help people, should I really be marketing? Should I really be tooting my own horn? Should I be or should I be um, more relaxed around it? 
I remember when I was 12 years old, my mom took me to Hallmark, Hallmark, and I found these, uh, these, this packet of note cards. And I was always in love with stationery, and I love paper goods to this day. And we actually have stationery, and I hurt my life. Um, and what I discovered was there was this little note card set that said life's too short to be subtle. And I really live my life based on this today, and I run the company based on this. You know, so often especially women, when it comes to marketing, we're like tiptoeing around the sale. We're tiptoeing around the point. We're not willing to be bold and say, this is what I have to offer. It's going to change your life. It's going to transform your life. It's going to help you create this, this, and this. And here's the link to buy. It's like we subtly put it in the PS section, or we don't want to get on Facebook Live and talk about our program because we don't want to waste people's time. We don't want to come across as too salesy. And some people are in love with the coaching space and they love coaching. They love serving clients. But when it comes to self-promotion or promoting their company, that's not what they're all about. And they aren't willing to develop the skill set. And so they stay the best kept secret. And so what I'm going to say today, I really hope that you understand this is said with so much love. But if you're not willing to do marketing and sales, then you should probably be a coach in someone else's company. There's a lot of amazing businesses out there who are looking for people who want to help and have an expertise to share and don't actually want to do the marketing and strategy. And so the title of this podcast is, Do You Have What It Takes to Have a Successful Online Coaching Business? And frankly, if you're not willing to do the marketing, learn the strategy, and put yourself out there in terms of sales, go and work for another coaching company. We would love to have you at ours. (laughs) There are plenty of other companies out there who need incredible, talented people. You don't actually have to be your own marketer. You don't actually have to have your own business. You can be a, a consultant in someone else's. So I want you to really get clear about what your goals are and what your desires are for yourself and your company. Is it that you're in a consultancy role? Is it that you're actually the head of a big company like ours? Is it like right now you're going to be doing all the things, you're the marketer, the salesperson, and the coach, but you recognize later on down the line, there are some changes that you're going to want to make, and you'll want to be focused in your zone of genius, which might be coaching, might be the marketing, right? So you just need to decide what camp you fall in and neither are right or wrong. We just need to be honest with ourselves. Are we actually willing to learn about marketing and strategy and sales? Because to this day, even during launches, I'm telling my team, like, I just had this idea when I woke up, let's do this. Let's send this email. I want to do this on Facebook live. My, I work very closely with my head of marketing, and I absolutely love it. I love redeveloping our website. I love course creation. I love coaching. I love delivering this podcast. I love all the things, but you don't have to love all the things. So I want you to really think about what it is that lights you up and what you're willing to do to get results, and then just make a decision. All right, my final piece here is number five. If you're willing to get visible on behalf of your clients, then you have what it takes to have a successful online coaching business. Now, I wrote this deliberately in this way. You're willing to get visible on behalf of your clients because oftentimes we move through our fear of getting visible. We move past that fear of getting on Facebook Live and people judging us and not saying the right thing or things not being perfect. And we do it for us and our company. And that's great. That's one of those things that we have to do, of course, to move the business forward. But I also want you to remember that you getting visible, it's serving your clients. And so in those moments where you're unable to move past the fear or the doubt is creeping up and it's really keeping you stuck, you have to remind yourself there are people out there who need you. Now, one of my coaches, he even said (laughs) that he'd have to be on his deathbed before he didn't do what he said he was going to do. And I love that. It's such a great reminder because how often are we not willing to send another email? Are we not willing to get on Facebook Live because we have that fear of what people are think or we don't want people to judge us? How often are we not willing to share a vulnerable story because we want to be seen as the expert? Now, I always believe that all the challenges I experience are not just for me, they're also in service of you and you understanding that you're not alone. I'm not only giving you my expertise because I'm on the other side, but I hope I'm reminding you that you're not alone and that if you are experiencing what I went through, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just part of the journey. 
And your clients need to hear that as well. So you have to ask yourself, are you willing to get visible, not just for your company, but also on behalf of your clients? And sometimes that really shifts things for people. They're no longer so focused on their own agenda. They're no longer so focused on making it about them and their company. It's about that service. One of the things I love to think about is thinking about how many millions of people or billions of people we can help through the I Heart My Life movement. So many people think about hitting seven figures or six figures, but what about you? What if you thought about it like, I want to serve a million people and that would result in my million dollar business. I want to serve a hundred thousand women, right? And you don't even need that many, to be honest. I did a training once on what made up our seven figure year and it was 500 clients. But I just want you to think about service and I want you to think about the desire to help people, which really kicked us all, you know, kicked it off today on this uh, podcast. So are you willing to get visible? Are you willing to put yourself out there? Are you willing to share your expertise? Are you willing to share your story? Are you willing to share the deep mindset work that you did? Are you willing to teach? And if you've answered yes to all of the above, then you do have what it takes to build a successful online coaching business. I want you to understand these aren't the only points that are important, of course. There are other ways in which you can know you have what it takes, or there's maybe a time for you to make a decision that you want to be a part of someone else's business instead of having your own. So I want you to get clear, and I want you to know that if it's in your heart and you do have the desire to do this, that's really all you need to know, and the rest will be figured out along the journey, and it'll become clearer how you get visible. You'll learn marketing strategy and sales. You'll do the deep work. You'll develop your expertise. If that desire is there, just start with that. And the rest is going to unravel. The rest is going to become more obvious. And you'll know very quickly whether this is the right fit for you. But truly, it's that feeling that I believe trumps everything. So start there and just know that if it's in your heart, you are ready to start. All right. I'll look forward to talking to you soon. I hope you loved today's episode. And as you probably heard, the doors for iHeart Coaching are now open. This is our signature program for new and aspiring coaches looking to build their dream online coaching business and move forward with transforming their mindset, creating financial freedom, and of course, having a big impact in the world. We help you with all five areas that we talked about today on today's episode, so you don't have to worry. Everything is covered for you. We truly think of this as a business in a box. So go to iHeartCoaching.com to learn more today. Thank you for listening to the I Heart My Life show. For more inspiration, success tips, and ways to achieve your life and business goals, definitely follow me on Facebook and Instagram on I Heart My Life Now. See you next time.